Well, one thing I want to point out is that Nordine ships out every coil, evaporator coil, with pressure on it. There's a rubber plug, there is a uh, cap on the liquid line. So all coils are shipped out with pressure. To verify that you have pressure in that coil, just remove the black cap from the liquid side of the coil. And inside you'll see a Schrader uh, core in there. Just depress the Schrader core, you should hear pressure come out. That will indicate that the coil is holding pressure, that there are no leaks in it. If it does not show any pressure, you could either leak check it or return the air handler back to the distributor and uh, get one. I would check, uh, when I was still out in the field, I would always check my equipment and check my coils to make sure that they did have pressure on them before I left the distributorship. I would recommend that to any dealer out there to go, before you take the equipment from the distributor, just remove the cap real quick, push on this, and make sure you have pressure on that coil. Now that we've verified that the coil has pressure, let's go ahead and remove the door to the coil. Put that aside for now. Now we want to just uh, inspect uh, the coil area, make sure there's no damage with the drain pans. Uh, make sure everything else is connected up properly. This is a horizontal, so if you're in a horizontal mode, you should have the horizontal drain pan in there. Um, I would also inspect the, the positioning of the coil on the pan itself. Just go ahead and verify that it's all the way completely back to the back side of the drain pan. Um, on the right hand side, there is a, uh, a uh, bracket there that holds the coil and helps hold the coil in place. Just make sure that's positioned all the way to the rear of the coil itself. It's down here on the lower right hand side. Um, we want to any, prevent any air uh, bypassing through there. So if you just push to the back there, that'll ensure that that uh, bracket is completely to the back side of the coil. Um, this is also a good time to go ahead and verify your piston. If you need to make a piston, if the QRD asks for you to make a piston change inside, you just break these two uh, connections here. Again, a metal to metal connection. Go ahead and break that open there. Remove the old piston and install the new piston. Uh, again, we talked about thread uh, leak lock or anything like that. Make sure that's on the threads and uh, not inside the piston distributor itself. And just go ahead and tighten down, get another quarter turn with your wrenches and you should be good to go. But this is the time to do it now when you're inspecting the coil and making sure everything's in place properly. Now that we have the metering device changed and installed correctly, now we want to go ahead and braze our line sets onto the coil itself. As you can see with a microchannel coil, it's no different than a fitted tube coil. We still have copper stubs coming out of the coil itself. Um, again, you would just remove your plastic plug here, go ahead and uh, unsweat the Schrader assembly here, swedge out your liquid line, and you're good to go. Again, brazing with nitrogen, we want to prevent any, um, um, any oxidation flakes inside there. Although the filter dryer will catch 99% of it, we just want to be on the safe side and make sure that we catch it all by, and prevent it as much as possible by using, nitro, or using nitrogen when we're brazing on the line set. Uh, just a brief description of the refrigerant flow. Refrigerant enters in on the liquid line here, passes through the metering device, either a piston or a TXV, enters the right hand side of the coil. Once it enters in there, the liquid starts to boil off. Microchannel coils are a single pass coil. They're not a multiple pass like uh, and, and multiple distribution like our fin and tube coils. So refrigerant enters in, of course absorbs heat, the, the heat out of the air. The cool vapor exits the coil on the suction line and then back out to the condensing unit. Now keep in mind it is a little bit different that since we don't have multiple passes going in there, that the right hand side of the coil of course is liquid and as that's boiling off it's going to be most likely the coldest side of the coil. And as that refrigerant passes, the coil is so efficient that it absorbs so much heat that the, the suction side might be a little bit warmer than what you would normally expect from an A-coil.